Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. I'll give you a, just a moment to take a guess as to who we will be talking to in the afterlife today. Take a moment, get an idea. That's right, it's Mr. Walt Disney in the afterlife. Now, I love Disney. I grew up going to the park in Anaheim, California. We have relatives out in Southern California. So ever since I was so, so, so little, lots of little pictures of me, little Bridget at Disneyland. And then throughout my teen years and into adulthood as well. In fact, for my 40th birthday, my sister and I went to Disneyland and uh, played for a couple of days there. It was really fun. And most recently then I have been to Walt Disney World um, also for my sister's 40th birthday when she turned 40 and I um, I go frequently like at least once a year I try to get there some years I miss a year but then the next year I'll maybe go twice so I've been pretty lucky in my adventures to Disney World because it's really a special place for me it, it helps me feel connected to my family and it was a really special um, my dad really loved Mickey Mouse and he's in heaven. So that's kind of a, uh, a family thing that we all feel connected to. So, all righty then, let's get started. I do not know a whole lot of trivia about Mr. Walt Disney himself. I really don't know off the top of my head, even intellectually, when Disneyland opened, when Disney World opened. I really don't know a lot of the history. I just know the characters and the magic and the movies and that's what I know, you know, the fun stuff. And so I am interested in talking to Mr. D Mr. Walt Disney. So we'll look forward to connecting with him. So come on in. Ooh, his energy is a little, uh, oh, so kind. So vibrationally, he just brings in an energy of just a loving, gentle energy. He feels iconic like I feel him really solid like legend and yet I feel this really tender energy like a very kind man is how it feels to me charitable is a word that comes forward and I recognize um, Mr. Disney that you were a uh, a businessman I mean Disneyland and then seeing the vision for Disney World and and having that be created now I think that was created after you had died and I believe that you died of cancer. Is that correct? Yes, that looks like lung cancer or throat throat cancer Yes Smoking Smoking a lot. He says Okay um, I feel the energy of you as a visionary, just imagination, imagination. And I know the word is, that's used as imagineer. Um, I feel that with you. I feel this incredible mind. Like I see all the widgets and the sprockets and the turning of the ideas and the mind. But I also, so I see you very, I see you intellectual, but I feel you like an engineering mind, like to, not just a businessman, but I feel you like an engineer. Were you an engineer? I feel you like an engineer. I do know that you were in partnership with a brother, I think, Roy, sounds right. Um, I think it was a brother or a good friend. I think it's a brother. And that, that so that I know, that, that part I know. And okay, so there's a lot. I feel like you have things you want to share and talk about. Clear the air, he says. Let's clear the air, he says. There is a lot of speculation. There's a lot of talk. He says a lot of chatter about my desires. What, what would Walt do? He says, what would Walt do? And I appreciate the, the respect and the recognition for, for how I would take care of things. But the truth is, Disney isn't mine. It may have my name, but it's not mine. It wasn't made for me. I didn't make it for me. I made it for you. I made it for families, is what he says. He says, so the intent and the creation, the purpose of Disney is for families. I am going to get emotional. I feel that. 
I feel how that's part of why it feels good to me <laughs> and to many of you who watch. It's not just about money. Like he's not talking about it like that at all. And so he wants to clear the air on that. And there's a lot of um, drama. It's almost like business gossip around Disney and, and how the company is run and who's in charge of the company and what their decisions are and the, the buy-ins and buy-outs of different parts of Disney and how successful or not successful stuff is. Um, so how do you feel about that, about the recent like acquisitions of other intellectual properties, you know, um, like the, some of the Marvel stuff? I don't, I'm not really into that. So you guys, I don't know. So if you're fans of that, I just, I apologize because I don't know. Um, and also Star Wars, of course. I mean, do you feel like that fits with your initial vision of Disney? Or how do you feel about that? Or what is your, your afterlife perspective about that? Because let's be clear, you're not a human person anymore. You don't have the ego mind attachments that we do. And so when people reflect on what would Walt do or what would Walt want, it's different because it's a different time. So I recognize that. So I honor that. But I'm asking because I think it's interesting. What would your, what are your, what is your take on all that stuff? I mean, does it belong in Disney? Is it, is it part of your vision? And he says, my vision wasn't my own. It was, it, it, he says, this is really nice, sweet, so sweet. I see him in black and white, by the way, just so you guys know. He says, my vision for Disney, for a place for families, to just have time together as a family, like sitting around the dinner table kind of time where you're fun and relaxed, where it's fun, it's relaxed, it's not stressful. There's not distraction, which is kind of funny, isn't it? Because it seems like Disney nowadays is very full of distraction. <laughs> and yet that's just the sign of the times. That's the way the times are. As we built Disney, the foundation of Disney is going to naturally grow and expand beyond what was initially envisioned because there's so much more that the world can offer and provide than what one mind could do. Disney is not the product of one mind. It's the product of a dream that is shared with many. And that dream grows each year. I don't really have a judgment, a viewpoint on the business decisions of what is becoming the business of Disney as a corporation, as a company. That part of it isn't what my focus is. That part of it is not what you would, you Bridget, you would share as the iconic part or the legacy part. That's not the legacy part of me, for me. Although it's natural to have a stake, to take, to, to have stock in the outcomes of what it is we produce, we create and share with the world. And it is, it is nice to see others enjoying that shared dream that, that we had when we made Disney. I want to be really upfront and share that it's not, it wasn't one man's dream. This is often, I think, presented as the case, but it's really a cooperative effort. So many people, from the person who sweeps the streets in the middle of the night, who kisses their kids goodnight and goes off to work, to the greeter that opens the gate in the morning. It really is a team effort. And I believe it is so today. There certainly is magic. Although now it seems a bit more orchestrated, set with the intention, reminding cast members to follow through on that initial purpose. That, that part, the magic part, it happens so often on its own without encouragement. It's not a requirement, it's just a natural, energy it's a your word would be energy it's a natural 
part of the atmosphere in Disney World, Disney Land, all of the Disney experiences that you have. How do you feel about the other locations? So you created the Disneyland in, in California, which I've been to, and it's like really tiny now. It's like super crowded there. Yikes. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to visit there because it just seems so busy and full. And then there's, you know, Disney World with so many lands. So today, if you were alive today, Walt, may I call you Walt? I feel like I know you now. <laughs> he says, of course, of course, <laughs> we could be friends. <laughs> Thank you. Um, he, uh, so, uh, so which would you prefer? Which park would you take your family to? Walt Disney World with all the four parks or Disneyland in California and with the two parks. He says, my heart is in Disneyland, of course, because that's what I made, what I touched, where I walked. Okay, so I'm curious about the i feel like you feel like it wasn't i feel like you feel that it wasn't going to realize it wasn't going to be as big as it really became is that true quite he says quite it was much more of a phenomenon than i could have imagined which goes to show you how important dreams are when they're shared when they become real so many others can then open up can funnel in to that shared dream because I, I want to say vision but he, he keeps using the word dream 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 I love that that's beautiful so um, I don't understand the time frame so in Disney Disney World in Florida now I think intellectually I can remember that you were part of that planning process but maybe you had died before it actually opened is that true is that accurate Initially, I did some of the initial drawings. I was in on some of the initial planning, yes. And my death was unexpected as far as the timing of it. We were hoping that I would have more time. A good six months or six years would have been nice, but six months would have been appreciated to finish some of the initial plans. And I'm seeing Epcot. So we, do you want to talk specifically about Epcot? There's so much land in Florida. There was so much open openness there. So much potential, so much, so many, many possibilities for the future. And that part was exciting to me. That was really exciting to be able to set the groundwork, just pour the foundation for what is possible for the future. So talk about Epcot and some of the the rides or this layout because there's the countries there's the section when you walk in with a big almost globe like geometric shape that some people refer to as a big golf ball you know hey there's a big golf ball and he laughs he says I did like to play golf he says but it was not modeled after a golf ball intentionally but I would admit it certainly does look like that doesn't it the spaceship earth mm -hmm. <clears throat> He says that ride, I, that's, that's, that was my intent. And the living with the land. I wanted a ride, I wanted rides there that would present opportunities for learning and growth, that would bring us closer to together as a humanity, to really understanding the world around us and each other. And so any ride that would promote that unity and understanding would be okay in my book. Okay. The whole concept of sustainability is really, really popular right now and growing food and, and all the different research and stuff and the ways that, like there's a ride living with the land, I think, or living on the land. I'm not sure the title, but um, it talks about that. It talks about farming and how it works in the process and things like that. It's really quite, it's pretty cool. It's very relaxing too. It's like a boat ride, you know, set on the boats. And it, it's a good, you know, it's a, it's a good, it's, um, how do I say this? It's relative to today. Um, he's talking about the mid-80s, during the 80s, 82, 84, and 85, 82, 84, 80, 83, something about 1983 in Epcot. I don't know what that is, 82, 83 in Epcot. Not sure what that means. Um, 85, and then shows me fireworks in 85. 
Not sure what that means. Um, then there's countries. What the, the, is the countries part or an original part of Epcot or is that a part that came after Epcot? He says after. That's an after. Although part of the point is to bring people together and that really fits. He's saying that fits, that really fits. It's instrumental in that our human relationships. It's really instrumental. I would agree with you 100%. But it seems to me kind of like, so the world of tomorrow, the future world, Epcot's supposed to be like this futuristic kind of city. That was the initial concept, right? The world of tomorrow. Yes, he says, yes, world of tomorrow. And really innovative and things like that. And almost Jetsons-like. Remember the TV show Jetsons? That's our, the vibes I get from your, how I, how I feel like that was your vision, kind of, you know, like the world of tomorrow. Um, but it doesn't really seem like it's like that. I mean, did it, does it, does it meet your expectations? Did it, were you able to share what you wanted to share about that? And is there anything more that needs to be said about it? I like how open it is, how the layout is very open and there is lots of green space, which you don't expect necessarily in Florida in regards to, or an amusement park in general. A lot more upkeep with that, but it feels open. It feels like a community, like land, like its own land. That part, I, I, would, I, I would comment on that. All right. And as far as rides go, there's not really a specific, like he's not talking about a specific ride, like I'm thinking Soarin' and Under the Seas with like Nemo and Friends and Mission Space. And I mean, there's so many different kinds of, of rides and things that are there. Is there, oh, well, let me ask you this question. I actually wrote questions down, but I'm not even asking you the questions because you're offering so much. Do you have a favorite ride or did you? He says, it's a small world, hands down. It's a small world. Oh, that is awesome. I have to say, Walt, Pirates of the Caribbean is pretty awesome, I must say. And Haunted Mansion. Love those. Those two guys love them. He says that it's a small world because, because all the families can go on it together. Hmm. And that's what you see. You see old grandmas and itty bitty newborn babies on that ride. He's right. Think about that next time you're riding an It's a Small World after all, right? Okay, like I kind of would have expected you to say something like that, so that's that's cool. Um, do you have a favorite park? Like now, like he, right away he says my heart's in Disneyland because that's where he was, but, um, and he's saying, yeah, Animal Kingdom is pretty fascinating to him. He really thinks that's interesting. That's really neat. He says, that's really neat. That's neato. Animal Kingdom is neato. Who would have thought I would do a zoo? I would create a zoo. <laughs> you know, how cool is that? That's pretty cool. He's like, that's neato. He said, it's the word neato. That's neato. All right. Um, do you have a favorite character? <laughs> he actually says he likes Pluto. He likes Pluto. Of course, Mickey Mouse, right? That's the big iconic Mickey Mouse. And I love the sorcerer Mickey. I love all that. Oh, that's great. But he says uh, Pluto. Is, is good. I, Goofy's fun too, I think. I mean, they're all great, aren't they? And he says, right away, like I literally see a Pluto dog. And I don't know if he created that for someone or if that has some kind of a sentimental meaning, but Pluto is something that he really, really likes. Of course, Mickey is iconic and very connected to you, you know, but uh, in the different iterations, you know, Steamboat Willie and the Waldo and the <laughs> different types of the Mickeys. Uh, very cool. But he, he showed me Pluto. So anybody who does trivia or who knows anything about Walt Disney or Walt Disney World, put in the comments, what's the deal with the Pluto? What's the deal with the Pluto, you guys? And did he say Nido? I want to know that too. And uh, favorite ride. What is your favorite ride in Disney? If you've been to Disney World or Disneyland, what's your favorite ride? What's your favorite ride? All right. Fun, isn't it? We've got to have interaction and engagement. I love the mouse ears. Love the mouse ears. These are from a recent trip that I took with my oldest son. When my kids turned 15, I took my daughter and then I took my son and then 
I'd like to take my other son, but he's like not really into the whole airplane thing, so we'll have to see. But I'm also planning a trip for my 10 year wedding anniversary, which we will bring my youngest son to, to Disney World. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm hoping that uh, that works out. We'll have to see, I don't know. You know, cause it's kind of spendy. Yeah. To be honest, Walt, it's very expensive to go to Disney World. You know, I mean, it's, it really, it really is. It's quite, quite the undertaking. But it's nice that everything's really all included and all like right there. And there's there's experiences you have that, that you wouldn't have at your local amusement park or other places on Earth. So, I mean, I really I do enjoy that very much. I do enjoy that. It's a lot of fun. All right. Do you have anything in closing that you would like to share about being a spirit in the afterlife or about the legacy of Disney? He's sharing about okay we need to feel this so I'm gonna put my hand on my heart to feel it Disney is a legacy of magic that's what it is it really awakens that childlike sense of wonder in all of us Disney was made to inspire your inner child it was made to help you remember how to have fun and that some of the most important moments in your life are spent with those you love. Families. Family is really important to you, Walt. I can feel that. I have felt that ever since I sat down to talk to you, ever since I started writing questions and I felt you. Family was the most important thing to Mr. Walt Disney. I'm going to tell you that. And that is very clear. And that's part of the intention or the motivation, the inspiration for the Disney that you see today. Disneyland, Disney World, for the experience of Disney. Thank you, Mr. Walt Disney, for being our very special magical guest today. And thank you for watching, for being here at Above Life Channel. Now remember, the purpose of Above Life Channel is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope. Remember, it is your life, so live it. Thanks for being here.